Okay guys, so this is my dream boat. If you guys want to see what the boat is all about, check out this video. So let's actually just start by taking a look at the bathing platform. So this is a bathing platform, it's a two-piece platform with the outboard engine in the middle. This boat is obviously an outboard engine boat, a lot of advantages to it. Um, I got a little step here to step on the other side of the platform. I got some inspection hatches right there. That's actually a very good thing. This boat has loads of inspection hatches to uh, maintain the boat. I got two rod holders on each side. I'm not a fisherman, but this is good for accessories that you might want to put onto the boat. I got this Mercury 115 outboard engine on it. The 2.1 liter engine, all I know is that it's uh, one of the best in its class for that kind of size and power range. So in the port side of the boat, you will find a bathing ladder that looks like this, and that is easily put back in into the, into the bathing platform and looks like this once it's back in the platform and drops in deep, easy to get on and off the boat, very, very good feature. So right there is the inspection hatch for the bilge pump. I like to have all those hatches, hatches uh, you know, looked after. The bilge area, yeah, not a lot of water in there. This is how it should be. So get that back onto again. Back um, behind the motor, this is where the ski pole will go. So this is uh, where you would ma uh, mount the rope for the water skier, for the wakeboarder, which we do actually a lot. Actually one downside to that boat, you can't have the ski pole mounted on the boat and uh, at the same time have the engine trimmed up um, to the full the position. So I always have to demount my ski pole, which is a little bit annoying. Another thing I like, uh, pretty much like about the boat is that all the posters are very, very well made and there are clips on the back side of the posters which you can use to uh, demount them completely. So that is good if you want to clean them off or if you want to have, a, if you want to store your boat outside for a while without a cover on, you can still do that. Just demount your pulses and they will not suffer from the, from the elements. Now on the back bench seat, there is a storage locker as well. And I you mostly use that for a light pole, my ski pole. Also my Bimini extension, which I will show you later. There's also the battery switch. And there is the access to my, uh, to my battery and to, my, to some of my safety gear. So onwards to the aft cockpit. The good thing about that boat is, is, is that this boat is self-learning. And, and, and actually all the bigger Quicksilver boats are self-learning. This is just such a big safety feature. This is so convenient because if you get water in the boat, say let's uh, let's 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 uh, have a wave coming over the bow, it will immediately self-drain without any problems. Very big feature that actually nobody's looking for, but once you have it, it's just so good to not worry about bilge pumps running uh, running out your battery. So this is very cool. What I also do like about the boat is the seats. So these are the captain's chair. So this is the captain's chair actually. This is the uh, co-pilot's chair, whatever you want to call it, the passenger's chair. So just flip that down. You can sit right there like this. Or in the driving position, I want you, if you want to stand up, you can flip it up like this and you have a quick way to uh, get more space. So that's also a handle. You can use that to flip around the, the whole seat. That goes for both seats, so like this, and then you can sit um, forward and aft. And I have a good, good view of the back. And uh, looking back at the wake border or something, a good, a good place to observe the wake border. And again, on the base of the seats, there are inspection hatches like this. Um, there's just a fuel tank in there, actually, so no, nothing really to look at. And also here are two lights that I've put in after we bought it. I don't know if you see that, but this is the actual hatch for the fuel tank. So if there's any problem with the fuel tank, fuel tank is kind of rotting away, Wh whatever, it's plastic, but um, you can lift out the whole section where the fuel tank is, is, is put into the boat. The whole sections with the seats will go off and you have an easy access into the fuel tank area. So that's pretty good. So this is the helm of the boat and I love it because the center console is just a good way to drive a boat actually. I think it's pretty self-explaining but still steering wheel, hydraulic steering. I got my engine, my throttle unit which does, does not have a safety release so just forward and aft. Um, it's uh, with cable, so it's no fly-by-wise. This is a little storage well where kind of my key goes and that stuff. Um, 
drink holders. I, I fit a little, a little standby compass in there. I also have a little fusion radio, so this, this is that unit with two speakers at the moment, but I probably will fit more in the future. Got the key right here, I got the kill cord right there. Um, I got three switches right here. So this is uh, the bush pump, which is automatic, but it will uh, still work with uh, that switch if you want to manually override it. And got position lights and I got an anchor light right there. So this is pretty self-explanatory. I did fit that myself together with my dad, with the co-owner of that boat. Um, it's a pretty, pretty good system. You have the water temperature, you have a pretty good sonar, you have uh, your GPS map to show you the way. Now the reason that the steering wheel and that the driver is not set starboard like it usually is on, on ships on the right side on the starboard side is that if we would um, steer from the starboard side then the throttle quadrant or the throttle <laughs> itself would be situated here. This is how it was on the older versions of this boat but the problem is that if you if the, if the throttle is located on this side then you would easily uh, you know, switch it over into a position you uh, don't want to, and that would be dangerous. So what they did is they then put the steering column onto the left side, so on the port side, where it's actually not usually located, so have that throttle on in the middle, where it's not so easy to hit it accidentally. So just a fa safety uh, consideration. This is the forward area, forward lounge of the boat. We got a good grab rail to mount fenners to. Got two more cup holders on each side. I also have that kind of step to step up to the forward area of the boat to the actual anchor locker. That's pretty convenient because um, I don't want to always step on the pulses, especially with my shoes on. So that's a very good thing to have. I got nice pulses that I've bought off of uh, IKEA. So. This is where they are. So let's check out the center console area first because there's a lot of good stuff going on there. It's first of it's really really big. Bonus of space in there. And uh can check it out together. So this is how it looks right now. You might not notice it, but there is just so much space in there. Um actually there's a lot of stuff in there right now. I'm gonna show you later. So these are the extensions for the sunbed. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. This is the table and it goes uh, in the forward area and you know, got my bag in there, got my drone in there I got this uh, custom made cabinet, so I made that myself together with my dad again um, got some cables in there, some tools I uh, got some sunscreen, some shower gel, but this is actually a natural shower gel, so you can use it in the water without harming the environment, so that's pretty good fire extinguisher uh, very important and this is actually where the where it connects is the electronics of the boat so this is the electronic compartment you can access the electronics I got a little light on there as well that's pretty cool I fit that up myself as well um, so yeah just to have a little bit more light when accessing it during the night just to demonstrate how big that actual area is this is my master cabin ladies and gentlemen this is the uh, heart of the boat I love it. Man. So this is the most forward locker behind the anchor locker. And um, again, gas struts, which I love. Got the boat cover in here. Uh, it's also well protected from the elements, so everything in here stays dry. Also, I got those little cabinets in there. I got my helmet for wakeboarding. I got my beverage buoy. I got my, I got everything I need basically. I got some cleaning supplies. Uh, some dive gear for when the anchor is stuck again, so this is uh, all you need in there. And also that cabinet is self draining as well, so that will go into the bilge. And later the bilge pump would pump out the water that has ingressed into those hatches. This is the anchor locker, this is how it looks. I got my anchor in there, I also got my uh, fenders in there as well. Which is asking myself where the anchor is, but the anchor is actually in water right now. But this is how it looks. Uh, these are the fenders, this is how it looks tidied up. Um, the fenders on each side, it's got two fenders on each side. Got the anchor locker with the chain and the rope. And this is how the, or where the anchor will go. This anchor locker is obviously self-draining, so this is where the drain is. <laughs> this is the drain of the anchor locker right there. So just to give you an idea how big the actual sun lounge area uh, is after extending all those pieces. I'm gonna. So this is how it looks. This is the sun lounge area. It's really, really big. Uh, you can even sleep two adults in there. I think it's pretty good for a boat uh, of this size, you know, 18 footer, to have a sun lounge area this size. So that's, uh, yeah, all I can say. 
and one nice thing they've done to that boat that they didn't do to the older versions is even if there is the whole sun lounge uh, thing going on you can still easily open up the the big cabinet that's amazing I think so as promised this is the table this is pretty cool as well I got the cup holders in, in there this is nice to just sit around and with those extensions that I've shown you earlier it's really a, a wraparound seating kind of so that there is a two people it's just two people and uh, one on either side so that gives us a total of like six people that can just hang out in that area a little bit about the boat the boat has a dead rise of 50 degrees so it's not a uh, boat made for rough waters but it's uh, it's a mix mash between a boat made for rough waters and also a very stable platform when you're just at anchor so they, I think that's perfect for those coastal waters that we are driving the boat mostly in but for now I'm very very it has a good haul it has a very long haul length so that what a boat will do with wide open throttle about 65 67 kilometers an hour so that's about good amount of 30 knots so i'm good with that speed cruising speed is around 35 to 40 kilometers an hour so that's good as well and i don't care about the top speed you know i don't care about the fuel economy <laughs> these days i hope you liked the video and i hope to see you on the next adventures pretty soon on this channel so uh, if you don't already have give me a follow and yeah uh, see you in the next one bye